Hello legends, it's Guan here. Thanks for tuning in for today's video. Now, the Chinese stocks have been caned by the father of all, the CCP. Now, does this mean absolute doomsday? Should we enter the arena or should we just back off? Now, in my opinion, I would say yes and no. Let's deep dive into this. Before we start, if you don't want to get caned by CCP for being naughty, click that like, sub, and the bell. Be a good kid. Here's a cute golden retriever for you. What the heck is going on? Imagine one night, you were so drunk and you fell asleep, and you woke up wondering what's going on. This is exactly the sentiment in the Chinese stocks. Relax, let's go through this slowly. We have the stock prices of the private education companies like Tao Education Group and New Oriental went downhill like a truck as they slated to become non-profit. Basically, all the money will be in the toilet soon. Now, Didi, the king of right healing company in China, recently got a giant big fat slap from the CCP, not allowing the users to install the Didi app. Tencent and Alibaba recently announced that they will be opening up their walled garden ecosystems to allow consumers freely decide which services to use. This is like breaking down the Berlin Wall, more choices for the Chinese consumers. Tencent was also ordered by the CCP to end their exclusive music contracts to combat monopolistic behavior in the music industry. On top of that, Tencent and Alibaba had also donated large sums of money to the Common Prosperity Fund, championed by none other than the CCP. As long as it does not get donated to a Nigerian prince, Meituan's market cap is down by $60 billion at the very least, due to the workers' rights and compensation issues. What a bloodshed. That's not all. Tencent also recently got into a hot soup as a result of the latest gaming hour regulations targeted on underage children. Now, with all this massacre from the CCP, is this really the end of the Chinese stocks? The reasons behind the crackdowns. Alright, let's take a look at the reasons behind each crackdown one by one. In the case of Alibaba, they allegedly forced the Chinese merchants to only pick one platform out of all the other platforms. This is a classical scenario of when wife and mother fell into a river, who do you say first? You will feel agitated by this question, wouldn't you? Ask yourselves, if you were to be a merchant, Amazon and eBay are now forcing you to choose only one. This sounds like infringing your freedom as a merchant, right? Just saying. In the case of Didi, it was due to the fact that they had been illegally collecting personal data and did not specify the intent and the Chinese government worried about the possible sharing of this critical personal user data to the non-Chinese parties. This is an issue of national security. This is like a kid who asks to use mom's credit card to purchase in-game currencies but refuses to state the reason. If you are the mom, would you still let your kid blindly use a credit card without valid reason? This is, this is my card and I'm dead. Why did you take my card? Heck, you'll probably be taking away the credit card away from her. In the case of Chinese private education companies, more than 40% of them operate in East China. Think about it. East China is where the rich population lives. It's practically the place for crazy rich Asians. And this practically means that only the rich can continue to afford the expensive fees. Sounds like wealth inequality to me. There's a report from Deloitte also shows that the total investment values and deals from private equity funds in the Chinese private education sector skyrocketed in 2015. Think about that for a second. Private equity funds will only be interested in companies that can grow and return profits fast like Fed's printing machine. The pressure from these investment funds leads to rise in tutoring fees, which further leads to stress and problems for the Chinese parents. In the case of Meituan, they are ordered by the CCP to ensure delivery riders can earn a minimum wage. Sounds like the CCP is trying to protect the workers rightfully. In the case of Tencent, it's because of its games are widely prevalent and many Chinese children got so addicted to it and as a result, the myopia rate amongst 12 to 14 years old had been at 72% in 2018, up from 58% of the 1 million student population in 2016. This is the result of the Chinese gamers playing an average of 12.4 hours per week, higher than the global average of 8.5 hours per week. The most recent gaming hour restriction definitely has a noble objective. No one can deny that. I believe you will do the same too if your kids play 8 hours of PUBG or watch hours and hours of TikTok videos at midnight. Blatant beatdown or some form of truth? 
It's common to think that CCP intends to hurt these companies like a big fat bull trying to crush the poor Nobita all the time. Hold up. Let's use the Asian parent analogy. Look, the CCP is the Asian parent that uses crackdowns to ensure the kids are behaving nicely and doing the homework rather than stealing and cheating their way out of it. This is basically like CCP helping you as an investor to police the companies and ensure that they don't continue to become the mafia corporations. This will mean that the Chinese companies have to be extremely innovative in their approaches in order to compete for more market share. Case in point, Kodak was a monopoly in film cameras at one point. Then the digital camera and smartphone camera kicked them out as a result of the innovation. Personally happy to see that they are laying down a good foundation for a healthy, innovative and competitive China economy. Another closest example would be the stagnation of the South Korean economy. 80% of South Korea's GDP is controlled by the Chebos. The Chebos means rich family in Korean. They are basically the large legacy conglomerates like Samsung, LG, Hyundai, Lotte and more. These Cheboy companies are so big that the government did not even dare to push reform regulations towards them. And not to forget about many corruption cases like the case with the former president, Park Gun hye who has been sentenced to a 20-year jail time. With the recent heavy crackdown and enhanced regulations, it seems that the CCP learned something from its South Korean neighbour, a thing or two, about managing the super big monopolistic companies. My final thoughts. I'm personally quite bullish on the Chinese e-commerce market, as the Chinese e-commerce sales is only 25% of the total retail sales. Therefore, there's still a long runway. More importantly, the Chinese disposable personal income level is expected to increase in the future, and this would translate to more private consumption per capita, signaling more consumptions in the Chinese economy. And don't forget that Alibaba's China logistic business aims to achieve the 72-hour global delivery, and this will allow their merchants to enter the international markets competitively. Sure, I won't deny the regulation risk that may happen from time to time again. No one would know what the CCP is thinking right now. That being said, no government in the world would want to let some random companies have superior control over its critical sectors. In other words, the Chinese government would be like, You all better continue to behave like good boy good girl, huh? If not, I'll kill all of you. That being said, if you still want to get exposure to the Chinese economic growth, but are afraid of the over-concentration of the regulation risk, you can just go with the ETFs with less headache. You know, you can't have more headache when you diversify your headache. There are some good ETF choices, namely, number one, the iShares MSCI China ETF that gives you direct exposure to the Chinese mid-size to large-size companies. Number two, the iShares Hang Seng Tech ETF that gives direct exposure to the top 30 Hong Kong listed tech companies. Number three, the Invesco China Technology ETF that gives direct exposure to the Chinese tech and the communication services companies. Aside from considering the underlying holdings of the ETF, Please do consider factors like the expense ratio as well. So, which ETF would you invest? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to like, sub, and click the bell for new video every Friday. I will see you in the next one.